It was pouring rain and I saw this dog in this not so great area. She was just standing there in the middle of the road looking lost. So I pulled over, tried to get her, and she came pretty close, but she was scared. So pretty. I couldn't get her. So I drove around, I couldn't find her. I lost her. She ran up here somewhere. It was acres and acres. It was kind of on a recycling plant, and there were so many places that she could hide. The next day, I just couldn't get out of my mind, and I drove back to the location to see if she was hanging out, and I saw her again. So I just started feeding her in the exact same spot. Come on, baby. Looks like somebody dumped her. She's well fed. And then the next day, I went back with the dog trap with a friend. Get in there, baby, get in there. And the next day, I went back I was so disappointed. I mean, I just started crying. She got really scared of me after trap failed and she wouldn't come as close to me as she did on that first day. She would just see my car and leave. But I was just laying in bed thinking about this dog. I wasn't gonna get up until I got her. Just get in my car, okay? You'll have a great life, I promise. But I can't imagine how scared she was and where she was sleeping. Hi, pretty girl. Just to keep her coming back to the same location, I set up a feeding station. I'd go there sometimes two, three times a day. I'd come home at lunch and like drive by, just to see if I can get a sighting. There she is. I went to Home Depot. I bought two bungee cords and a big chain. I went back with the same friend, so we set the trap again. And I chained the trap to the tree, and I just started feeding her in there. Each day I would push the, the food bowl a little back more to the back of the trap. We brought chicken pastrami, and I just set the food a little bit around the entrance and kind of put the jackpot in the back of the trap, and we went park behind the tree. And my friend who I was with, she couldn't even look. But she went in, and we got her. Pretty girl. <laughs> Took three weeks to get her. Twenty-one days. I walked up, and she was just nervous, but she was so beautiful in her eyes. And then just kind of sat there with her, used good energy, talked to her, loaded her in my car, brought her to the vet. Kind of coax her out. Good girl. And then I just sat there with her for about an hour and she finally started to relax. She started appreciating the touch and the pets and she hadn't had that in so long. We went back the next day, gave her a bath, and the bath was a real bonding experience. She kind of really appreciated that and became more relaxed each day. Every day at lunch or after work, I would just go bring her burgers. Wow, another cheeseburger. And I think on day three, I got that little tail wag. Yeah, I think I saw a little tail wag. We put a pretty pink collar on her. I just started blooming each day with love and trust and removing the fear. Can I please have a kiss? She'd started to get excited. Mm -hmm. and then on day four, she like tackled me on the couch. <laughs> wow. are the toughest to be adopted, but that's what we had before. I'm like, nope, that's what I want. <laughs> I said, give me the one that I knew would probably be aborting for so long, not even find a foster. Yeah, that's that's what we wanted. <laughs> when I first brought her home, she was probably like, where am I? You know, I don't know this place. But once she knew, okay, I think this is my home, 
Then she became such a different dog. She started coming to the door. She just like wiggles her butt. And, yeah. You know when she got your neck oil? Oh. It's just the sweetest thing. She's so protective of us. And I just see how happy she is. Like, comment, and subscribe.